Hello, this is Abdul Matasiri with Light Welcome in another Boeing 737 video tutorial. And this uh, video will continue our discussion regarding the vertical bearing. And in this example, we'll talk about how can you use it when on a radar vectors from the ILS to manage your descent in a way to intercept the glide slope, ideally without level off. So we are inbound for still the VR here for the ILS runway 3 for right. The approach is set in the uh, FMC. And I'm going to go with the heading here and we'll extend the center line as well from the final approach fix. We'll simulate a descent to 2,000 feet, and as you know, always if you wanna, if you are planning to use the uh, vertical bearing, then we'll put the runway in the descent page here with the slash. So we have the angle now to the runway, which is 2.3 degrees, and as you know from the uh, previous video regarding the vertical bearing, you can maintain 2.5 degrees up to 15 miles. So we're going to hold our altitude until we have 2.5 degrees here and then we'll start our descent. I'm going to bring up the BFD and the ND for a better view. So we have 2.5 degrees. I'm going to dial first the vertical speed that we have here as our initial target, so 1200. And as usual, you need to monitor the flight path angle and adjust your vertical speed to maintain whatever vertical bearing you want. Now the vertical bearing is 2.6. So we need to go with a higher flight path angle just to maintain a vertical bearing of 2.5 degrees. Uh, so as you uh, know, we'll start our configuration between 20 to 15 miles from the touchdown. Our direct distance to the final approach fix is 21 and another 6 miles to the runway, that is going to be 27 miles. So we can still maintain our speed of 240 or 250. Now we have a vertical bearing of 2.5, so we reduce our vertical speed to 1100 or 200. Again, the flight path angle will be changing a lot, so when you change the vertical speed, just give it some time and let the vertical bearing changes by 0.1 degree before you do the correction just to reduce the time you spend on the MCB changing the vertical speed. I'm gonna adjust for heading of 25 here, 025. So we'll wait until the our distance to the final approach fix is about 14 miles, that's going to be 20 miles to the uh, touchdown. Here the speed, I don't know why PMDG, the speed does increase with a vertical speed of 1200 in the airplane. You need to go to up to 1400 or 1500 and you can uh, maintain a speed of around 250 with no tidal power. So now we are at about 19 miles from touchdown. So I'm going to go ahead and slow down to up speed. So we'll go to up speed here, 190. And we'll reduce our vertical speed so we can decelerate and configure. So we'll go with 500 feet per minute descent rate. Again, once the speed is around 220, we'll go with flaps 1. Once the flaps 1 is established, we'll go with flaps 5. And let's assume we are clear for the approach. So I'm going to arm. So here now we are looking for a vertical bearing of maximum of 3.3 degrees and a minimum of 2.8 degrees. So I can even go level now with no problems if I want to uh, decelerate quicker. But the thing is, we need to stay within 2.8, a minimum, to 3.3 maximum degrees. So now our speed is 219, so we'll go flaps 1. And we'll set flaps 1 speed. And once established on flaps 1, we'll go flaps 5. And we'll set flaps 5 speed. Okay, so now I am at 3.2 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead with a vertical speed of 1100. Or 200. So this is my maximum should be our vertical bearing to touch down. 
again the gear and flaps 15 will go at about 3 miles from the final approach fix and within 1 mile will go with flaps 30 land checklist again we'll look at the flight path angle it is 3.7 and you have 3.3 so I'm going to reduce my vertical speed to 1000 feet per minute Uh, one thing I would like to highlight here is the glide slope signal. If you are still far away from the extended center line of the runway, might not be accurate. The uh, signal for the glide slope will be accurate if you are very close to the extended center line or on the extended center line. And with the ILS already tuned and identified. So, mental math or the vertical bearing to the runway, in my opinion, is a better indication of how far are you from the glide slope while you are still off the extended center line. So we have 3.2 degrees, I'm going to reduce my vertical speed further. And as you can see now, we are approaching the extended center line we are within 0.5 miles. And the glide slope is, we are slightly above the glide slope. And the reason for that, that we want to maintain an angle higher than once established as to compensate for the loss of lift as the airplane turns toward the runway. Uh, as you remember, if the airplane catches the glide slope and depending on how the angle that's going to be turning to to follow the, the localizer, whatever vertical speed set here, it will not be maintained and it's going to be increased. So in order not to be below or capture the glide slope on a descent and then the airplane will uh, add a lot of power to uh, maintain the glide slope as it is going up it's better to be slightly above it so you are just continuously descending as you capture the uh, localizer and glide slope okay so now we have ball lock capture and glide slope capture at the same time and the airplane will continue its descent to capture the glide slope and we are very close to uh, the vertical speed on once we are established on the ILS which is about 850 feet or so again now we are 3 miles from the final approach fix so we can go ahead and extend the uh, gear flaps 15 and within 1 mile we'll go with flaps 30 uh, target speed and launch checklist so the point again is it depends on how far are you or the angle that you are intercepting the localizer at 3.3 if it is a steep angle if it is more than 30 degrees less than that you might want to maintain a 3.1 or 3.2 degrees in the uh, real airplane once the airplane establishes on the uh, glide slope the vertical bearing to the runway is 2.8 degrees and i have no idea why it is 2.8 although i am flying an ILS at 3 degrees as per that chart but this is the uh, what I have observed in the real airplane on uh, different ILSs. So for me personally, if I'm coming for an intercept angle, I'll maintain vertical bearing 3.3 degrees as I start uh, configuring for flaps 1, flaps 5. If I'm coming in for a straight end, then I might go for a 3 degrees as I configure. So at 250 speed, maximum angle 2.5 degrees, as I start slowing down top speed and configure for flaps 1, flaps 5, I'll let the airplane decelerate until the vertical bearing is around 3.3 degrees, and then I'll try to maintain that angle. And uh, once the uh, localizer is captured, usually you'll capture the glide slope on a descent. Uh, one thing just to, to mention here is I use this technique in, uh, if the traffic is not a factor, especially not in a class B airspace, and in VFR conditions. If I'm in a real IFR, then I usually will try to descend and capture the glide slope from uh, below. Okay, so now since we are established already, I'm gonna go set the missed approach altitude. We'll verify our set runway heading here. And we are within two miles, so we can go with flaps 30, land checklist. Oh, sorry, gear down flaps 15. All set flaps 15 speed and speed break will be armed. And then we are within flaps 30 and about one mile from the final approach fix. So we'll go flaps 30 and land the checklist. So flaps 30, target speed and landing checklist. 
So this is what I wanted to talk about for this uh, video, which is how to use the vertical bending when you are on uh, radar vectors for an ILS to be able to manage your descent in a way to capture the glide slope as the airplane descends as well, instead of leveling up. Uh, mental math works perfectly and I use either one of them. The vertical bearing is the easiest one for me now. Since it is just one number that I look at and adjust my vertical speed based on that. So I hope that uh, this uh, video would be of some benefit to you. And as usual, if you have any questions, comments or concerns, uh, please let me know. Thank you for watching.